You know the saying, practice makes perfect. But what does that really mean? How does our mind enable us to naturally become experts at an activity? In this video, we will discuss how our brain maps out our activities so that they become like second nature. The first time you do something, it is not already programmed into your brain. You do not have the hardwired neural pathways that enable the activity, but your brain makes it happen anyway. It coordinates all the various perceptual, cognitive, and physical signals needed to do the activity. This requires concentration, of course. Your brain works overtime to put all this together. That is why, even though you can do it, the activity feels awkward at first. When you repeat the activity over and over, neurotransmitter chemicals simulate the brain cells related to the activity to grow dendrites which are filaments on the brain cell to reach out and connect with other brain cells involved. With enough repetition, the brain cells actually do connect in a circuitry of brain cells called the neural pathway. The growth and connection of the neural pathway takes a lot of repetition and time to establish itself, but once it's connected, the brain is literally hardwired with a simple efficient circuitry that enables the activity. The brain no longer has to work hard to make it happen. So the activity feels easy to you, as if it were second nature. You just do it automatically, without having to think about it. Practice makes perfect, as it were. The cool thing is, the neural pathway is now a physical part of your brain, so it won't go away. In other words, you can't forget the skill, even if you tried. That is why riding a bike comes back to you so naturally. Even if you haven't done it for decades, you don't have to relearn it. That is why people call it muscle memory. It's amazing what the brain really does, if you think about it. No pun intended. It's not just simply that you think it and the rest of your body doesn't. Your brain actually goes through a unique cycle in order for the rest of your body to do the movement you are trying to achieve. All of the body's voluntary movements are controlled by the brain. But one of the brain areas most involved in controlling these voluntary movements is the motor cortex. The motor cortex is located in the rear portion of the frontal lobe, just before the central sulcius that separates the frontal lobe from the parental lobe. To carry out direct movement, your motor cortex must first receive various kinds of information from various lobes of the brain information about your body position in space, they get that from the parental lobe. Information about the goal to be attained and the appropriate strategy of attaining it, motor cortex gets that from the anterior portion of the frontal lobe. And information about memories from past strategies, the motor cortex gets that from the frontal lobe, and so on. As their name suggests, the basal ganglia consists of a set of neural structures buried deep inside the cerebellum. These ganglia, or clusters of nervous cells, are tightly interconnected. They also receive information from several different regions of the cerebral cortex. Once the basal ganglia have processed this information, they return it to the motor cortex via the thalamus. One of the likely functions of this loop, which operates in conjunction with another one involving the cerebellum, is to select and trigger well coordinated voluntary movements. This role of the basal ganglia in initiating and regulating motor commands becomes clearly apparent in those whose basal ganglia have been damaged. As I mentioned before, 
The cerebellum is an important part of the looping process that the brain goes through in order to initiate voluntary movement. For you to perform even so simple a gesture as touching the tip of your nose, it is not enough for the brain to simply command your hands and arm muscles to contract. To make the various segments of your hands and arms to deploy smoothly, you need an internal clock that can precisely regulate the sequence and duration of the elementary movement of each of these segments. That clock is the cerebellum. The cerebellum first receives information about the intended movement from the sensory and motor cortex. Then it sends information back to the motor cortex about the required direction, force, and duration of this movement. Thus, the loop involving the cerebellum operates in addition to the loop involving the ball of game. Regulate the details of the motor cortex. The basic functions of the brain is to produce behaviors, which are first and foremost movements. Several different regions of the cerebral cortex are involved in controlling the body's movements. These regions are organized into a high archery, like for example, the crew of a ship. In the human brain, planning for any given movement is done mainly in the forward portion of the frontal lobe. This part of the cortex receives information about the individual's current position from several other parts. Then, like the ship's captain, it issues its command to the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe acts like the lieutenant of the ship. It decides which set of muscles to contract to achieve the required movement. Then, it issues the corresponding orders to the rowers the primary motor cortex, also known as area 4. This area in turn activates specific muscles or groups of muscles via the motor neurons in the spinal cord. Even for a movement as simple as picking up a glass of water, one can scarcely imagine trying to consciously specify the sequence, force, amplitude, and speed of the contraction of every muscle concerned. And yet, if we are healthy, we all make such movements all the time without even thinking of them. The decision of picking up a glass of water is accompanied by increased electrical activity and the frontal region of the cortex. The neurons in the frontal cortex then send impulses down their axons to activate the motor cortex itself. Using the information supplied by the visual cortex, the motor cortex plans the ideal path for the hand to follow through to reach the grass. The motor cortex then calls on other parts of the brain, such as the central gray nuclei in the cerebellum, which help to initiate and coordinate the activation of the muscles in sequence. It's amazing to know that the simplest movements that you create without even really thinking of it has to incorporate all of these processes that the brain goes through, like picking up a glass of water and touching your nose. Such elementary movements consist of a unique process that the brain goes through. So, the end result to all the muscle memory and to all the practicing and practicing and practicing and all of the various unique processes that the brain goes through to doing the same thing over and over and over again, the end result, you become as awesome as this guy.